come and see the light of the world, who proclaims God's love and peace overcoming the darkness, and who brings us new ways to live our lives. Come and know that the light of Christ has redeemed this broken world. Come and worship, for we are God's people, giving grateful thanks to God for God's word that goes forth ahead of us and whose birth we celebrate. Come, let us pray. God of the past, God of the present, God of the years to come, we worship you. As an old year ends and the new year begins, fill our hearts and our lives with hope and new life. You surprise us in unexpected places. You come to us in people we may overlook. Your light beckons us to come before you, to bow down at the manger in awe and wonder. We are filled with hope that a new day is dawning as we pray that you will establish among us your way of righteousness and peace. Amen. Welcome all to this virtual service. We're glad that you're worshiping with us, wherever you may be. Um, next Sunday, Epiphany Sunday, will again be all virtual service. We hope you will join us then. Uh, it will be as it will be the first Sunday of the uh, liturgical season of Epiphany. We will be um, sharing in the Sacrament of Communion. So if you wish to participate in that, all are welcome to participate at the Lord's Table at Central, but do prepare your elements uh, so that you will be ready to share in that at the time of Communion next Sunday. Also next Sunday at 9.30 before worship, I invite uh, everyone who is a chair of a committee or a substitute chair, some of the committees are lacking a chairperson right now, but the Leadership Development Committee is having a special meeting from 9.30 to 10.15 on Sunday, January 3rd. Uh, Sandy Connors is calling this meeting and Caroline Considine is also putting together a wonderful agenda. Uh, you can call either one of them or me for Zoom information to join the meeting virtually. We will be uh, planning at, for Chapel Hall and giving you an update on the plans that have already been kind of formulated. We want to share those. It's really exciting developments. And this is the outcome of Growing Central for Tomorrow, which each one of our committees uh, thought about and really worked hard on uh, two years ago. So this is the the response to that, and I hope that all will be able to join us. That's next Sunday at 9.30, and talk with Sandy Connors, Caroline Considine, or me uh, for information about that Zoom meeting. Uh, on the 17th, we're hoping to be able to worship in person. We will keep you posted, but um, that is our plan. If that's 
um, satisfactory with the governor's recommendations due to the pandemic. So stay tuned for that. I'll give you an update on that next Sunday the 10th. And a reminder to uh, welcome anyone who is thinking about joining the church and making a commitment to this church. Uh, we will be um, inviting new members to join. There are several meetings at the end of January to acquaint you with how the church works and to kind of give you an orientation. And we'd love to welcome you to those meetings uh, with new members joining on the first Sunday in February. So be, do be in touch with the church office uh, if you'd like to be a part of that group. Look forward to welcoming you. Uh, shall we now continue our worship? Will the new life in Bethlehem awaken us to new life? Will the light make a difference in our lives? Let us make a life-changing confession together before God. Gracious and loving God, we confess that we have not kept Christmas all year. After last Christmas, we went back to tending flocks and have forgotten to adore him who was born in a stable. Having followed the star and found the baby, we have not followed the cross and found the Savior. Teach us to enter into the deep mysteries of the season and so find meaning and joy for our existence. Let the Spirit of Jesus be born in us that we may bring glad tidings of great joy to all the people in our lives. Amen. The forgiveness of God is timely and timeless. In Revelation 21, we hear these promises. Behold, there is a new heaven, a new earth, and a new city where the river of life flows, where the tree of life bears fruit in every season. This heaven, this city, this river, this tree are a vision of your life, reborn, restored, and renewed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning and Happy New Year. The reading today is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. I wasn't sure I should get a cat just a few weeks ago. I really didn't need to take care of one more thing, but the mice were getting out of control. So I asked Patrick if perchance he and Donald had another feral cat who needed a home. And I talked with a friend who volunteers at Providence Animal Rescue League and she agreed to just be on the lookout. And then one day a neighbor had adopted a cat without knowing that it was pregnant and there were kittens. So you know how it is. Sometimes it's the things that we don't expect that turn out to be wonderful blessings. The little cat is now a part of our family, bossing the dogs around, delighting us with her energy, and not to mention her snuggle factor. It's hard to remember what the house was like without that little cat. I bet you too have been faced with something new that you weren't sure about, and then it came and you fell in love with it. All of us have. Something new comes to us. Something new appears, unexpected, unasked for, even unimaginable. And it doesn't look like it's going to fit in at all. And your first response is, no, uh-uh, no. And it doesn't fit in at first. You kind of make adjustments. You keep it temporarily. You kind of nudge it with your toe or your hand. See what the heck it is, how it's going to fit in. You argue with yourself whether it's really worth it or not. But then, with this mixed welcome, the new thing takes its place in your life and everybody gets used to it. And after a while, you cannot imagine how you managed without it. 
A bishop in the Episcopal Church wrote about this process of welcoming newness in regards to his church some 20 years ago. The introduction of inclusive language, the ordination of women and gay and lesbian people, all new, all different then, things we certainly take for granted now. And he said he could not imagine now the Christian church without these voices, and neither can I. So I ask, what are the challenges, the questions, the new things that you are facing now in 2021? that we could look back on in 20 years and think, how in the world did we let that happen? Imagine them not as roadblocks, but as something to explore, delicately nudge around, examine carefully, and discover new dimensions, and be open to the newness that after some time, we can't imagine life without it. That is precisely why we celebrate new beginnings, because we human beings are always finding resilience and creativity to embrace changes and to grow in our faith. I think sometimes we forget how strong we are when we act according to our faith and trust in the loving God, that things do change, and that's for the good. We have come through so much this past year alone, 2020. The pandemic and all of its effects globally. Blatant racism across our country brought to the forefront. Zoom meetings, one after the other after the other. And still no visiting of loved ones in the hospital or nursing home. We've come through a lot. As I wrote this, the new little cat was on my lap, and I hesitated to get up to refresh my coffee cup. But I thought, she has to negotiate, and she has to be flexible, just like the rest of us, accepting change for the good. So I got up, and she resiliently made the new necessary adjustments for a new spot. Our neighbor, over here on uh, Stimson Avenue, Ted Wid Widmer, writing about Roger Williams's book, A Key into the Language of America. He, uh, Widmer, Ted Widmer, finished his essay with this conversation between Roger Williams and his Narragansett neighbors. Have you seen me? I have seen you. I thank you for your kind remembrances. There is a new beginning that didn't exist before. People were listening and seeing each other. We need to have that happen in our lives today, between neighbors and strangers. I personally think that he was in the world is one of the best lines ever. That's in the gospel reading that Caroline just read. God is here in the world, in the person of Jesus Christ, so that the world so that we can be saved and changed, and so that we can begin again. Our crowns have been bought and paid for. We are the children of God, strong, resilient, creative children who can accept change and make it positive, make life better for everyone. So if we continue to focus only on all the things that God needs us to do to put the world right, and we don't focus so much on our need for God, God's grace, God's saving power in presenting us with challenges, we won't really be beginning again. If we accept the power of God to transform our life, to transform our community, to transform our country, that is a new beginning. As a friend has written, what is required is a faith reorientation, getting over the idea that we are in charge of the world and that we're on the cutting edge of all things important and getting in touch with God's radical grace for sinners, which is, as it turns out, the most inclusive category of them all. 
He was in the world, in the beginning, as the Word. And everything came into being through the Word. What came into being was the light for all people, the new way of life and light. But it's hard to make a new beginning all on our own, isn't it? It's much easier to resist change, to doubt, to hesitate, to want to wait. We need that spark, that light, that new day, that trusting space that God creates to create a new world and a new beginning in us. So the question is, what is God up to in your life? What is God up to in your life? This doesn't mean that we have to recreate everything. I think sometimes we think it's all up to us. It isn't. God is in the world. After all, the shepherds went back to their fields after the astonishing message they received. They didn't stay in Bethlehem where the exciting things were happening. They went back to their responsibilities. And as we will recall next week, the wise ones from the east returned to their country by another way. There is a time to put down your responsibilities and to rush to Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass. There is a time to follow the star and take the road not taken. But there is also a time to return to the fields, to your home, to work, to feed the cat, to make new resolutions, to begin again where you left off, but with a subtle change, or sometimes a bold dramatic change, a new vision of who you are as God's beloved child. We sometimes expect that January 1st and New Year resolutions is a time when somehow circumstances will be different. The world itself will be changed. It'll be adapted in a better way. And that with those things happening, we too will be better, improved, a new addition of ourselves. But in the bleak midwinter, how can this be? We have only to listen to the news. Current events are bleak. The pandemic is still rampant in the world. We have still not erased racism in all its insidious forms. People are still homeless and hungry and not able to find a job. As the hymn reminds us, the earth is cold, water like a stone. This world has its broken parts, but the thing is, Something new has come among us. Someone new has been born. Someone new comes to us as he does every Christmas time. Something, someone has happened to us, us believers. And we, we ourselves, not necessarily our situation or the circumstances around us, but we are being redeemed as God's precious ones wearing those crowns that have been bought and paid for by God's Son. The world may not change that much, though it does change incrementally. As Martin Luther King reminded us, the arc of justice is long, but it bends. We have changed by accepting this new thing. So when we go back to where we were, the fields, or the office, or home, or school. We are different. We are different because we've participated at Christmas time in something impossible, in the world of the possible. We have met this baby who brings into being all kinds of miracles and mysteries and new beginnings, hope in us and in all God's children. Like those shepherds and the magi, we've seen something new. So let us go and begin again where we left off, but with renewed hope and strength 
courage, imagination, and creativity to reach across boundaries, to listen to neighbor and stranger, to see neighbor and stranger as who they are, also a beloved child of God. By God's grace, may we be open to seeing surprises in this world and in ourselves. We return, of course, to what must be taken care of, all those different responsibilities that each of us has. But we do not have to return as those weary, tired, despairing people that we were before we saw the wonderful new babe on Christmas Day, the miracle of his birth to that peasant couple, Joseph and Mary, in the barn in Bethlehem. The baby who will not let us look at the midnight stars in the same way. The man who grew into the teacher, who taught us to love all that came into being, all who came into being. He taught us to love all who came into being, which is, of course, everyone. May it be so. Amen. Let us gather our hearts and minds in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your gift of the real new beginning, the coming of Jesus into our world, once long ago in that barn in Bethlehem, and today in our hearts, as we try in our many different ways to follow him, trying to be patient, understanding that sometimes things take a while, trying to be patient as we wrestle with what may be new or strange or difficult. Because we do not always come to you, dear God. You come to us and offer us love over and over again, patient love. You give us light in our darkness, healing for our brokenness, forgiveness for all the ways that we have messed up, we have not wanted to accept your gifts. Again and again, you forgive us. Thank you, God. Help us to greet you once again. Help us to welcome you and all your signs. Here in the beginning of a new year, help us to embrace fresh starts, new ways of seeing, new ways of listening to you, our Lord, to our neighbors, and to all your creation. Because of you, dear God, it is a whole new world at the beginning of this year with limitless mysteries for us to discover and explore and embrace with the courage and the trust and the openness that we have received from you. So we hope not just to discover and explore and embrace, but also to accept that we have the hope of being new people in your name. We ask this and all things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have all freely received. Let us freely give.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we open our hearts to the mystery of your love and we give you our thanks and for your promise to accompany us through the unfolding of this coming year, we also give our thanks. We ask your blessing on these gifts and on us as well. Receive our gratitude as expressed through these offerings and hear our prayerful petition that you will bless us and sustain us in the year ahead through all challenge and change. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now be strong and be of good courage and fear not, for the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. Amen. Amen. 